It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Green Bay Packers and the Miami Dolphins. And it's coming up next. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Green Bay Packers taking on the Miami Dolphins. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn. Happy to be with you. And, CD, as we get this thing going, give the folks at home something to keep their eye on. The running game for both teams, because I think this is going to be an old-fashioned, old-school type of a game. Physical. Who wins up front? Who runs the ball the best and controls the clock? They will come out the victor. Carlson has his teed up, ready to get started. And we are underway from Miami. Taken at the goal line. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. He might take this all the way. He will take this all the way. Touchdown, Miami. So a heck of a start to this. So we haven't even settled in already in the end spot on the opening kickoff. Now, now you got to translate what that means because I think for a team that just scored their defense, I think they'll be more aggressive now. They'll be bold. They're playing with a lead and an early one and some momentum. So if you're the offensive coordinator on the other side of the field, you'd better be prepared for some heavy pressure coming your way. They're going to try and get another big score and a big one early. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that makes it 7-0 Dolphins. So how about that for an intriguing start? The opening kickoff of the ball game, return for a touchdown. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. This fielded right at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Six foot four inch Jordan Love taking the field for the first time. The 2020 first round pick from Utah State set to lead Green Bay. And at the start of Jordan Love's NFL career, he had one of the best seats in the stadium watching Aaron Rodgers work. But now, he's looking for more than that. Rocket arm, big play potential. Ready, ready. And he wants to show this organization that he's capable of being a dependable starter for the foreseeable future. Here's Love looking to pass on the first play. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Jalen Phillips, the former first-rounder, getting in there for the sack. Didn't have the greatest field position to start, did they? And now, after this sack, it's way, way worse. And right off the bat, first play of the game. So much for coming out throwing as it leads to an early second down and long. Love looking to throw it. He has it complete to Christian Watson. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and they'll be facing a third and 12. In today's football, 
the receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage. When you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. On third down, Love setting up the screen here, Aaron Jones. And he will not make it to that imaginary yellow line as they get him to the ground at about the 23. They'll get eight, but they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive because that's not enough. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. Here's Barrios. Now a hit and a loose football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And that's what friends are for. <laughs> As the returner, you know who you're buying dinner for later. Oh, without a doubt, because he just took care of you and your team in a big way. You know, you turned it over there. That's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot. The Dolphins take the field with Tua Tungavailoa, their quarterback from Alabama, at the helm. And when you watch him play, everything just looks like it comes so naturally to him. When he's dialed in and finds that zone, passes are crisp, he sees the field really well, and he takes charge as the leader of this offense. Good starting field position for the Dolphins as they have it first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Now second and nine. Again, they'll run it with Mostert. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. They'll come up now third and three. Now Tua on the bootleg here. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. On second down, Moster, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. But that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working, but how about his vision to see where the play was going? Crashed down inside and tackled him for a loss. What do they have for this? Third and 11. Two are going to throw. He'll take a shot for the end zone. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Braxton Barrios. A touchdown on a kick return and now one through the air. And the Dolphins have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stop it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. They got it done. Sanders now to have the extra point. 
And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Keyshawn Nixon now from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Getting to the ball behind the line was Xavier Howard. Boy, you go three and out on your first drive, and that's not the way you want to start this drive either. Doesn't seem like they're really into it just yet. No, first four plays, you don't want to call it a disaster, but not looking very sharp. Now a second down throw for Love here. He gets that one complete to Wicks. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. But to the defenses when they see slant routes to him, is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal game. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. Give them 22 there on the third down conversion. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved. And that's what they just did on that play. Let's go. Ready? Now a first down carry by Jones. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. A gain of just one. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. To pass, here's Jordan Love. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Brandon Jones picking it off. And he will bring this across midfield to the 49 yard line. So, more problems here in this first quarter. Already two scores down, and here they give away the football. And if I'm the head coach, I think it's time to start lighting a fire under some of these guys. Now, you have to do it within your personality. They can't perceive it as fake, but I'd go get after some guys because they don't look ready to play to me. They look flat, uninspired. It's time to get moving. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A six-yard pickup. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football as they've got it with a second and four coming up. Ready. Once again, it's Mostert. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hang on. Oh, pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least, it'll be fourth down. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And that'll hit the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. 
And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make... Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. Picked up by Javon Holland. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. Second straight drive now here, Charles, and him ended with an interception. And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to unnerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one, or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? Dolphins offense returning to the field. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. So from the 36 now, first and 10. After the turnover, it's Tua. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And he takes his just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. That one good for 13 and a Dolphin first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, He's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Tua sets up to pass it. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. The offense on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Looking to pass to a... To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Green Bay up to the task there in coverage and forcing a fourth down. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. Well, they already had the early lead, and they get the interception, Charles, and now they add three more with the field goal. Yeah, they're in control of how this game is playing out so far. You mentioned the early lead. Now they're expanding on it, getting plays on both sides of the ball. A winning recipe if they can keep this up. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Nixon now from his end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think, kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. Throwing. Love. That's complete. He finds Jaden Reed. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. And he's going to have a Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. It's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. 
Ready? To the air again, Love. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. He may go. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. Well, that's what you get, apparently, when you try to take on a Pro Bowl cornerback. And what a play there to make the interception and also bring it back for six. And he is so good. And we've seen teams absolutely stay away from throwing the ball at him. Here, he's just reading the quarterback's eyes the entire way, makes a great play on the football, and turns it into six. Sanders on for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Nixon elects not to return it. And this comes out to the 25. Green Bay's offense ready to go again. Now they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. <laughs> All right, guys, you had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. Love now. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Brought down by multiple defenders, and it's a loss of 12. And this offense continues to shoot themselves in the foot. And here, another sack. All game long, we've seen missed assignments, which have led to turnovers, Ready? sacks. Ready? This group has not played well at all here in the first half. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. Now Love. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously, one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. And he is going to lose yardage here, and a loss of three to bring up four. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And here comes Berrios. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on the lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Now A-Chan on first and 10. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. 
No hurry before you run your second down play. Two yards to go, second down. On play action, here's Tua. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Braxton Berrios on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Dolphins continue to pull away here in this first half. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook. But even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the route is on here in this first half. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Keyshawn Nixon now on the return. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Here we go. Here we go. About set to get this drive started. The Green Bay offense at the line. And with seven seconds remaining, not much time to really do anything. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards. So make it second and five. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a route. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. The Dolphins got some strong play out of their quarterback number one, Tua Tungavailoa. His two touchdown passes helped pave the way for his guys to take this lead into the intermission. Final adjustments being made for the second half. Whether they'll amount to much in a game that's already pretty well decided, well, that's another question. Nevertheless, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Packers set to get the football first, and they are trailing on the scoreboard as we resume action, ready for the third quarter. Nixon now from his end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Jordan Love in this offense, ready to get the football back. And that first half was nothing short of a disaster. Zero points on the scoreboard in a big three in the INT column. So they've got to get him going, obviously, right? So you've got to get him in rhythm. And we always think of short passes. I think of jet sweeps where they just kind of toss the ball forward. You know, that counts as a forward pass. And then you can say to him, look at that. You completed three, four, five in a row. Now you've got to get your confidence going. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Ready? Second down, another shot for Jones. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Ready, In motion ready. right, one of the tight ends. Ready, ready. They'll try and run for the first with Dillon. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It'll be a gain of six that time as it moves the chains as well. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. They couldn't contain Deshaun Hand that time as he gets home for the sack. Tremendous read and reaction by the defensive tackle and frankly partner. It's not that often the DTs have that type of easy access back to the quarterback. Never bought the play action fade.
Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. On second down, it's Jones. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. you got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Well, the pressure gets to Love, and he'll go down. Bradley Chubb doing what he does best, getting that sack. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Well, they, don't, they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. On now is the Packers punter, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. He'll take it a few steps in front of the 50. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Dolphins will begin this drive in great field position, first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And the first half definitely went their way, and this would seem to be a great opportunity to kind of put this game a little closer out of reach with a score here. Yeah, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them because if they can add seven more to their lead, A busy man five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead well, I'm not sure if they drew that play up to score but it scored indeed one play on the ground and into the end zone for six here's Nixon and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20 and Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field well, we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable now. A win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles, but I, I don't know. Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto until the clock runs out. But Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outlier. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. Play fake. Here's Love. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. And this drive is almost over before it began thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. He sets up the screen to Jones. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. I think that call was made not so much to try and get the first down, although <laughs> they would have taken it if they could have gotten it, but to give their punter a little bit of space and try and help out their defense. Yeah, they got the safe completion on third. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Fielded at the 43. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and 10 on the short side of the field. So now here come the Dolphins. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true. But last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter... You're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Oh. 
Tua wants to throw it on second down. He'll let this go for the end zone. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. When you look at the scoreboard, you'd think they'd be pretty comfortable right now with this lead, but these guys are absolutely not going to let up. They want to increase their lead, and they want to do it with a big play. Unable to connect in that attempt. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. He's got it with the 15. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. Everything's been going right here in this one. This offense, they've been in complete control from the outset. And here's another big play. These kind of routes have been open all game long, and they continue to take advantage. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a give to Mostert running right. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They did a really nice job there defensively. They strung the play out, didn't give him a cutback lane. On each play, you have guys what I call our BCR players. Guys are responsible for the bootleg, for the cutback, and for the reverse. They played that one perfectly. And rode him right out of bounds. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. Up big here in the fourth quarter, up really big. That passing incompletion, I don't think they needed the completion, but Charles, this is an offense right now that they're just having fun. They're clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, you're right. They didn't need a completion. They certainly don't need any more points, but they're not going to turn them down. They're going to continue to run what they have in their playbook, and they still want to run it efficiently. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. The kick by Sanders is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know, if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. Here's Nixon. This taken in right around the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. At this point, partner, things looking pretty bleak. They still haven't scored here in the fourth quarter, facing the big deficit. I just what Silver linings, what can they look to do here offensively? You know, it's funny. I talked about this with a coach in the offseason and kind of had this scenario like, what feels good to you and what feels good to your team? You're down big. You really have like one possession left and you're trying to put points on the board that don't matter, but do that. And he told me they actually do matter. And in this situation, he's going to try and run the best offense he can run to have at least a little bit of confidence to take away from that game. So right now, they're going to try their best to get something up on the board and not get shut out. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And third and eight now. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. 
Multiple defenders get to him there, and that is the sixth time he's been sacked in this ball game. But one thing I do know, these guys on defense, they don't want this game to end. They're winning by multiple touchdowns. They've shut down the opposing quarterback in a big way, and they're still picking up sacks as we approach the end of this one. Taken right around the 44. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Miami set to take over. We've paid this offense plenty of compliments already, but, I mean, they are deserving as they start another series to be leading by this much with so much time left to play in the fourth. Charles, it's really, really been impressive to watch. It has been, and you have to think to yourself, the preparation that went into this, but the absolute focus that they kept throughout in order to have this kind of a result, this is Super Bowl-esque, and they've got to feel awfully good about what they put out there today. And they'll come up second and seven. Motion man is Barrios. Now a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Mostert. And they get him behind the line, so that short gain on first down quickly negated. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, there's absolutely been no stopping this offense today. They already have the big lead, obviously, here in the fourth quarter. They could coast to the end, but right now they're not passing up any chances to put up some garbage time yardage. And, partner, why would they? Because who knows the next time you'll be playing as well as you have today. When you're in that zone, you go ahead and take full advantage of it. You don't worry about your opponent. You just worry about what you're doing. Running the counter with Mostert. And able to get this to the 31. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. From the 31, here's second and six. What? They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Here is third down and four. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. The 71 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, He's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. A run with Mostert up the middle. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that, plus three. And the Dolphins are going to be set up with a first and goal. A strong running gets them to the nine-yard line. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve 
to roll up their sleeves and show off their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described. Manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage. They're powering through, and they're controlling this game. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. For the winning team here, Charles, and that's about as big and clean of a win as you could hope for in the National Football League. No turnovers. While you mean while you force turnovers, you didn't allow any points, and you put up a bunch of points. What an effort. And Brandon, I just have to ask you, that's all the stuff that we saw happen today. Those are statistics, numbers, the whole deal. But my question is, how does one team come ready to play, and the other one, obviously, not ready at all? Well, 